everyone. Today I've been asked to explain what the Tweedlewink Pyramid is and uh, why it's important in our philosophy. So I'm happy to do that. This is the Tweedlewink Pyramid. I have made a new diagram, a little different than what you'll see in the book. I just So you, you may be familiar with our pyramid, if you can see that. So you can kind of see our 12 techniques and then how they come together to form a pyramid is important because you have your foundation and then um, and this it builds based on your child's actual brain development. So the, the brain develops from right to left. So you've got um, techniques that nourish right brain development. And then you have um, techniques that will nourish the building of the corpus callosum, which is the band of nerve fibers that connect the right and left hemisphere of the brain. So we call those bridge builders because they connect the right and the left hemisphere of the brain. And then we have our left brain builders. And then we have the capstone of our pyramid, which is wink, our um, whole brain harmony brings together right and left hemisphere of the brain uh, to work together for things like photographic memory and speed reading and all those things that sound fantastical but if you really understand the nature of the of the right brain which is the picture brain the musical brain the emotional brain then you'll realize that all it really needs is play and fun and emotional connection in order to open up and unlock its genius. And that's our goal. So how do we do that? We start at the very, very beginning with um, infants. And actually, we can start back in uh, prenatally with our right brain builders. Our right brain builders are um, love and image flash and listen. I've separated these two techniques with a line because one is about us as parents and teachers and or one half is the first two techniques are about us and the second two techniques are actually about um, stimulation that you're sending to your child. So the first two techniques love and image that's loving thoughts, authentic, unconditional love for, our, for our, our, our child or our students if you're a teacher. And image is holding um, the highest possible positive image of your child, visualizing them in their most brilliant, highest potential state, you know, happy, healthy, wise, loving, compassionate, all those beautiful things that we wish for our children, that those are the things that's hold, that we hold for our children in terms of holding an image. So love and image, that's the heart and the cloud. And that has to do with you. It has to do with uh, us as parents and teachers. The second two techniques are flash and listen. Flash are that's flashcards and posters and picture books and visually rich stim uh, stimulation. Um, and then listen is the auditory information um, or stimulation input sounds that, that teach such as classical music, world languages, uh, beautiful lectures such as uh, science or philosophy or um, Gosh, any kind of teaching lecture, even if you think it's over your child's head, it's really important that we fill the subconscious mind with, with information that is elevated. And even if they don't consciously understand, you can't limit the input by what you think your child will consciously understand. You've got to go beyond. You've got to think, what do I want for the future? And this is going deep into the subconscious mind, so it doesn't matter what the conscious mind can comprehend. So you can go to a Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, science le science lecture or uh, Michio Kushi uh, 
um, lecture or, uh, gosh, the, the ideas that you can come up with, they're, they're endless. So I went to great courses and I downloaded or received CDs and audio tapes at the time with, when my children were growing and developing. And I played all sorts of concerts and lectures all the time while they were building with blocks or coloring or playing with baby developmental toys. You know, just made it really low key, no pressure, just in the background so that the so that there was beautiful input happening um, all the time. So that's what this is about. And you can start that as big, as early as prenatally. You can um, talk to your baby. That's your listen. You know, you can t give positive affirmations. You can play classical music to the baby in the womb. Um, as a mother, you want to be careful of the images that you bring in because that your consciousness and your awareness and how it affects you and your body and your emotions and your psyche all of that creates an input for your baby so then once your child is born that's when we are able to start knitting more um, actively the hemispheres uh, together um, and so you can see there's the right brain to connect it to the left, it needs that strong, um, ner those nerve uh, fibers, that those bundles that go, that are built all between the, the hemispheres. So how are they encouraged to, to develop in a, in a healthy way? Well, every time you uh, do something that connects right and left, um, side of the body or right and left um, uh, field of vision or um, or see the left brain is the language brain the right brain is more of the uh, idea brain so when you talk and listen talk and listen talk and listen that's um, output input output input the right and the left hemisphere work together because they're processing the language what was just said how uh, what kind of context or meaning is coming from that the left brain is starting to awaken become more aware of what it is that's being said how it impacts the self and um, and, and gives meaning to it so that's why we have talk that's your conversation uh, with your child, even if they're not speaking back, you're still talking to them, or narration, where you're explaining what they're seeing. Oh, that's a tree. Oh, there's a little squirrel. You know, so you have your conversation and your narration for the talk te technique. You have eye exercises for your track technique. The track is, you see, the symbol is an eye. So every time you go left, right, left, right, left, right, and the, the eyes are moving. Anytime this eye goes back, goes past this imaginary line up and down, imaginary line over to here, then there, then the right hemisphere of the brain is connecting to the left. This is the, my right, but you can, t they cross. And every time you do that, you, you uh, stimulate the, the, the growth of the corpus callosum. So, um, so looking straight ahead is one thing, but if you're going to the left and right and left and right, then you actually start stimulating brain development and starting to stimulate communication between the hemispheres. So we do that with a tracking wand and other different uh, types of things. And then moving, when you, your right side of your, of your body is connected to the left brain, the left side of the body is connected to the right brain. And so when you move, especially when you move your body, one, si one side of your body across that invisible line to the, to the opposite, back and forth and back and forth, as in, I'm, I wrote Brain Gym. Brain Gym is, uh, a, is a program developed by Paul and Gail Dennison, and they, they teach how to help children in elementary school um, move in a certain way 
that stimulates um, that connection of the hemispheres. But you can do this early on with children with infant exercises that uh, Glenn Doman developed and others, um, and through infant massage and and uh, and so those baby exercises are fun to do. So every time, even patty cake, where you're kind of going crossing, cross, 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 that stimulates the corpus callosum. So easy peasy, right? Talking to your child, having eye exercises where they're moving. We also use light stimulation, and and uh, doing patty cake. Those three things. That's enough to move to really stimulate the the um, this uh, bridge build to stimulate the corpus callosum, which is which is to include the bridge builders in your child's development. So that then the the so then once they get to a place where they can start to match, and you can see that their cognitive development is really ready for puzzles or um, or uh, they're able to speak a little bit so you, you can see that the language centers remember the left brain is the language brain so the language centers are starting to come uh, and, um, and open up and become activated that's when you add our left brain builders so you can see that's the cognitive, logical, left brain builders. And how do we do that in our program? We incorporate the Montessori method. Um, in our weekly classes, we do it through um, play and Montessori-inspired games. So we sort of take the method and distill it into a class so that children really get the, the, the benefit of all the flashcards and everything that we're presenting and then it's able to and then through our movement and eye tracking they're able to um, have a strong connection between right and left brain and then it's even strengthened even more with our left brain um, builders our matching activities using the same content that they've seen before or new that um, builds upon what they've seen it's just a, a delightful time to see them start to talk about what they've learned and get excited about um, about what they've seen and start to make connections through conversation or through imagination and that's uh, that's a delight so this the four left brain builders are think draw do and read so think are it's the puzzles the blocks anything that's like those cognitive developmental toys um, matching uh, we do a lot of matching games with objects and cards and so you'll see that in our lessons at home where we have a full uh, set of cards and and uh, you can download them and children love to match 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 so they can match anything that has to do with like math spots or science concepts or um, phonic shapes phonic sounds Every, anything that you can teach, you can match. So we go from match to memory, and that's how we graduate from our matching to more of our, our right brain uh, photographic games um, using the same materials. We just reuse them later. So then, so that's the think, and then draw. Um, oh, going back to think, when you see a Montessori classroom and you see all the little lessons on the shelves, that's our think. Um, things that make make children match or, or sort or categorize um, those are all uh, go into that category of, of the think technique and then draw that's when children draw pictures and we go from pictures to shapes to letters and numbers to words uh, stories with with uh, with letters and uh, explanation of word, words. We'll write them out or we'll write it in highlighter and let them trace it. Tracing is another part of the draw technique. So anything where they're working with fine motor skills but more in terms of, of uh, expressing themselves through storytelling. Um, whether it's bringing the imagination to life or um, answering questions or describing what we, what we did on a uh, magic carpet ride. 
and then the next technique is do. And do with the do technique, that's more hands-on play. That's arts and crafts. Um, that's pretend play, whether it's with dolls or cars or dress up. Um, uh, it can be like um, our practical life, where they are using, uh, they're pouring water, pour, um, scooping beads, sorting beans. So that's just like using their hands to really um, uh, pull out their um, their ability to really interact and understand and synthesize the things that are in their environment. So it's really an important time. So we do a lot more of that in our daily program, not so much in our, in our uh, lesson time. Although we will put a lot of hands on things in our lesson time because children need to be moving and, and involved continually. But our lessons are usually an hour or less. And so um, when you have a home program, you want to make your lessons really, really short and then leave the rest uh, of the time for play. So it's important to have your lessons on shelves just as you would in a Montessori classroom. If you haven't seen a Montessori classroom, just go online and Google. Uh, Montessori classroom and you'll see like a lot of different uh, lesson area ideas how they put the different lessons out or go to our site um, tweedlewink.com and you'll see some pictures from our classroom and how we put things together we have small spaces and we just make the most of our small spaces so if you're at home and or you're in an apartment and you're not sure quite how you're gonna put all that together don't worry um, you can make your space work for you and especially if you just bring out small amounts at a time and rotate your material so um, and it's really fun when you have other parents and families that are doing the same program with you so that you can sh uh, share and trade and rotate among yourselves and then um, it's a lot it's a, it's a lot easier to do all right and then the final technique for left brain builders is read. It's not, when you hear read, you might be thinking, oh, my child isn't reading, it's just a toddler, because <laughs> this is typically the toddler stage. Um, the read technique is very, very beginning reading preparation uh, techniques. So that's when you're reading with your child. So Montessori taught um, demonstrate, model something, do it together, and then let them do it independently. So this is really that first part of uh, that first step where you're modeling reading. And you're, um, so you're reading picture books with your child. Um, you're just starting to, you know, we do a lot of phonics, uh, flashcards, phonics work, and then phonics matching. So by the time you get to the read technique, it's, it's later and they may then start to point out the different letters that they recognize as sounds, those phonic sounds. That's because you've developed the phonemic awareness through that early exposing uh, exposure to, to phonics. So that's kind of fun. You're reading together. You're reading to your child, then you're reading together, and then um, then there's an explosion when they get to the stage where they to preschool stage where they really are starting to read on their own. They're pointing out signs on the road and they're reading um, uh, advertisements in newspapers and they're starting to read through their favorite books and recognizing whole wor sight words and, uh, and just getting passionate about it. That's a thrill. That's a thrill. It's one of the reasons why I think I love being a teacher and a mother for my children. Like if my children, if if I were a mom that had to go to work and then I heard from the teacher, oh, they just learned how to re they read, they read their first word today and they were so excited. I would be like, I would be devastated because I wanted to be there. It's like for me, it's their first step, you know, or the first smile or the first word. It's just electric that excitement when they're when they're really pulling all of this together the subconscious has been seeded and 
and the the connection and communication is there and they have they've started to work with it then they start to express so toddlers where they're really starting to to express in an early way all that you've all the seeds that you've planted the richer this input is the more you have your child move and you talk to your child and connect you know talk could actually be called connect in terms of the label of that technique because it really is about talking and then listening and then talking and then listening for your child even if they're just going ah <laughs> you know as a as a baby but you know like i would sing a song you know dun, 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 and then i'd, I'd stop and then they they would finish it <laughs> so just different things like that that you can do so what we do is we the the twelfth technique is fly. So once your child has started to read and has uh, patience, uh, started to read with you and started to recognize certain um, uh, um, words or or uh, letter shapes, you can see that they're that they have uh, an attention span that is about you know fifteen minutes long or or longer, and and, and you kind of feel that they're ready, then that's when we bring in the wink techniques that includes like a quick meditation, heart meditation, where the children learn to just kind of, um, it's mindfulness where they, they feel their heartbeat and close their eyes and breathe. That's the first technique. And then there's um, six more that build off of that. There's the eye exercises and then the uh, the color play, which through with our technique called photo eye play, and the mental imaging, which is imagination play, um, on and on up to photographic memory play and speed reading. But we're really gentle about exposing our children to that level. We do a lot of work here so that the early literacy seeds have been planted and the and that when we start to flash pictures and words the children don't sort of like oh wait a second you know that's too much they're gently 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 introduced and if you start with flashcards then children are able to do the photographic memory stage much more comfortably late, later so it's all about preparation it's gentle gradual and builds you know you can see builds as they get older and they develop and we don't say oh gosh my child is now a toddler so let's start uh, introducing the, this technique no we wait and see if the child exhibits the characteristics of a toddler oh that my child is matching now i can i can see my child just put yellow to yellow together all right now i'm going to start doing more of these so sometimes we will break in matching lessons and then they're just not ready they're not ready we can see so we'll we'll test that way a little bit um, I try to avoid using the word test but you can kind of see we try things out a little bit to see if they're ready for it if they're not then we enjoy the the stage that they're in and the longer we're in this stage the more powerful it is because you're really inputting, you're able to input a lot of information straight into the subconscious mind without the filter of the left brain um, limiting the, 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 um, the, the input. So, all right, the left brain acts as a filter. So when you do start seeing the child talking more and having more cognitive type of, of um, uh, insights, then then um, they start to question and they start to, yeah, they start to ask questions about everything. And so when they're in that state, then that really absorbent right brain window is starting to close. So that's why when you hear, when we hear parents asking us, you know, and, um, concerned that their child isn't speaking well yet or coherently, we're telling them that there are things we can do to help with that, but at the same time, that means that they're still in this absorbent mind, this absorbent right brain state, and so, and they're very sponge-like, so 
while you're working on helping them acquire language skills, you want to take advantage of this time by continuing with the high quality input because you're really able to go deeper and um, and and there's more opportunity for input. It's like the roots of a tree. They're able to spread wide and far. I went to a tree farm uh, recently with our teens and we were looking for some things for the garden um, and the farmer said that that your root system the you the root system needs space to go to spread out and if you look at a tree and you can see the tree is like out to to oops here to here um, you can imagine that the root system is also out to that to that uh, massive amount underground so as above so below with a tree and so I was thinking gosh that's just like what it's like with our children you know when we're creating the neural structure of and the uh, vast mental library with all of the images the sights and sounds through flashcards and classical music and world and foreign languages and everything that we do you know positive um, uh, speech and 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 love all of that input this this creates such a strong um, subconscious library that when they get older then their intellect is able to really access that and express it access and express access and express That is our Tweedlewing Pyramid, our 12 techniques for heart and mind.